Follow along and learn how to make this money-saving homemade ham on the Masterbuilt 710 electric smoker. Step to making ham is you're going to need some pork. Today we're using a pork loin. Normally ham would be made out of the rear leg or the ham of the pig, but this pork loin was on sale. Also, it's a easy to find cut, so I figured this would be the perfect cut to start making ham with. I made a ham previously out of the actual ham of the, the pig, but that is a little bit tougher of a process because it takes a lot longer to cure. Also, there's a lot of tough uh, connective tissue that needs to be trimmed out in order to make it uh, nice for slicing. So if you're new to making ham, I'd recommend getting yourself one of these pork loins and starting off with that. It's gonna be a little bit leaner than your ham, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave all this fat on the outside and I think we're gonna end up with about the same amount of fat content at the end. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tie this to get a nice shape on it. I don't think there's anything to trim on this. Just looking around quick, but we're gonna leave it just the way it is. We'll get this tied up and then we'll check back. The next step is gonna to be to get the brine injected. We're gonna be injecting 7% of the weight of the meat of our brine. But this is basically salt with just a tiny bit of sugar and pink curing salt. I'm not gonna go through the exact amounts, but I'll leave the exact recipe down below. You will need to have one of these meat injectors for this recipe. You can just soak the meat in the brine, but this ensures that you get full penetration of the brine and will decrease your brining time. Ready? Yep. Okay, the final step now is gonna to be to submerge this loin in the brine for at least a week. Gonna bend that to make it fit in my bowl. Looks like it's just big enough. This ham has been in here brining for five days now. I would have liked to go on for a full week but based on my schedule and when I can film this cook, we're going to get this out of the brine tonight. I think because of the size, it's going to be just fine. If you had a larger cut, make sure you go at least a full week. If you're trying to do a bone-in ham, you better give it two weeks. So we'll get this out. In fact, I can feel that it feels cured to me. You can tell when meat is fully cured because it starts to get really hard and stiff. So this feels good to me. The next step in this process is we're going to rinse this off thoroughly. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick soak, only about 20 minutes. If you want, after the soak, you can go ahead and slice off a piece and cook it up and see how the saltiness is. If it's too salty, soak it longer. So once this gets rinsed off thoroughly, we're going to put it on a wire rack and put it in the refrigerator, uncovered overnight because we want it to form a pemmicle, which will allow the smoke to stick to the outside. Tomorrow, we'll fire up the Masterbuilt 710. Wi-Fi smoker. We'll get this on there. I got some applewood chips. This is going to be delicious. We're just going to set this water nice and low. This way the water is constantly changing out. Let that go for a little bit and then into the fridge. Time to get this ham on the Masterbuilt electric smoker. We've got it set to 180 degrees. If you're doing this on another cooker, you're just going to try to maintain a low temperature, definitely under 225 but I'd recommend keeping it 200 or below for this cook. We'll see how it goes. We might increase temperature to 200, depending on how our time frame is looking. For this cook, we will be adding water to it. There is a water pan inside this smoker. Start with hot water. This will make the temperature recover faster. When you're adding the water, just be aware there is a maximum fill line. We're gonna go right to that. And for this cook, we'll keep the top vent all the way open because I want a very high humidity cooking environment through this ham. We got one rack in today because we're only cooking the one ham. Put it right in the middle position. We're going to be using the included probe. And because this is Wi Fi, I can monitor the temperature from my phone while I do other things today. Remove this ham when it reaches an internal temperature somewhere around 150 degrees. Just make sure you get this probe right in the center. You're going to use your fingers like this as a gauge, and then we'll insert it. Okay, put this up like that. For something like a ham that I'm gonna be slicing, I like to come in from the top, because if you go in from the end, you're gonna have a hole in every slice of meat that you cut. So let's get this shut. I'm gonna add some applewood chips to this. We'll keep an eye on this. I'll bring it back, check in on this a few times. 
but there's not going to be much to see because this master belt smoker is going to take care of itself. To me, this is a big benefit, especially when going for a low temperature because most smokers have a hard time maintaining temperatures below 225 degrees from my experience. If you hear this smoker beeping, it's because it's got an open door alarm. When it senses the door is open, it beeps. Good reminder, so you should keep the door shut. With these electric smokers, you just have a insert like this that you fill halfway with some small wood chips, insert it, give it a quarter turn, and it'll start smoking. Okay, just like that, that's how many wood chips we want at a time. What you do is insert it here, quarter turn, and it's good to go. About an hour and a half in, the meat's sitting at 113 degrees. Let's get this opened up, I'll give you a sneak peek at what it's looking like. Starting to get some nice color on there. It's not gonna be that much longer. Been burning up wood chips. You can see right down there in the fire pot. If you can see it in there, there's what's left of the wood chips. I've refilled this one time, so that's two loads of wood chips so far. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put one more batch in because it won't be long now and this is gonna be done. I ran this master belt smoker for three hours, set to 180 degrees. After about three hours, the meat was setting around 140. It seemed like it was a little bit stalled out there. So I cranked it up to 200. 30 minutes later, we're sitting at around 149 degrees. I'd like to pull this around 150. So I'm gonna go in with my Thermo Maven instant read thermometer and double check it. Whenever you're using a probe thermometer, I always like to double check with an instant read. It's really windy out here today, so I hope you can hear me okay. Well, let's double check this. It's got some really nice looking color on it. I hope you can see that. Only getting 130 there. Yeah, I would say this temperature is definitely a little bit lower. Maybe this probe needs to be inserted a little bit further because we're off by 20 degrees for some reason. So let me push that probe in a little bit further and uh, we'll let this keep cooking for a little bit. So we'll check back when it's done. Once I got that meat probe inserted all the way into the pork, it was reading the proper temperature. We're now up to 150. That's the minimum temperature to pull this pork, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull it because I know the temperature's gonna increase as it rests. What we're gonna do is get it off. We're gonna put it into a vacuum bag, vacuum seal it, let it sit in the refrigerator for at least 24 hours. Two days would be better because you wanna let that smoke even out throughout the meat so that every bite tastes exactly the same. So let's get this off and we'll see what kind of color we got on it. Ooh, look at that, nice and steamy in there. That's what we want. Nice moist cooking environment for ham. There it is, look at that. You see that? Nice looking color on there. So we'll get this in this bag and we'll see you back when it's time to slice it and do a taste test. Time to try the ham finally. It's been sitting in a vacuum bag for a couple days in the refrigerator, letting that flavor even out. Let's get this opened up. Smells really nice and smoky. It's got a beautiful color. Just gonna pop these strings off and we'll check back when we get it on the slicer. We're gonna set this pretty thick to square it up and then we're gonna make some thinner slices and we'll make some thick slices as well. I have been calling this ham the whole time, which I still consider this ham, but technically this is probably Canadian bacon because it's made out of a loin. So if you wanna go ahead and make thick slices for Canadian bacon and fry them up, I think that'd be a great option as well. But let's see how we did. That nice pink color, it looks like ham. Let's go nice and thin now and see how it tastes. It's a little bit thinner. Look at that, nice and shaved. If you don't have a deli slicer, just slice it as thin as you can. That's so thin I can see right through it give it a try.
This has got a great clean smoke flavor. I would say the salt content might be just a touch high. I gave this a 10 minute soak. Probably I should have soaked it for maybe an hour. It's definitely still delicious. I'm gonna slice some of these up for Canadian baking because I think this is gonna be delicious fried, especially being a little bit on the salty side. Hope you enjoyed this cook. Make sure you head over to Instagram. Give me a follow over there as well, at Rusty BBQ Lamb. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe. Got some of it sliced up there. We're gonna do about half thick and half thin. There is one more thing I wanna mention though. If you like your ham more on the sweet side, when this got to around 130 degrees, you could have gone ahead and put a glaze on there, mixed up some barbecue sauce or any other sweet glaze you like and brushed it on the outside. You would have, had, would have made this ham a little bit sweeter, but I try to avoid sugar, so we skipped that step. But if you want to up the sweetness, go ahead and do that. That'll help counteract some of the saltiness. The more I eat this though, it is really good. Still delicious, but it does have a high salt content, so keep that in mind. As I said before, I'd just soak this a little bit longer and it'd be perfect. Let me know in the comments what you want to see me make on my next video. Thanks again for watching.